Today, the Dallas Cowboys play host to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers may look back at last week's game in Minnesota as a milestone victory for the franchise. Vinny Testaverde capped a 74-yard drive with his 11-yard touchdown pass to Bruce Hill. That sent the game to overtime and set the table for a rookie place kicker, Steve Christie, and he delivered from 36 yards out. A three-point win on the road in Minnesota, a victory that Ray Perkins, an emotional Ray Perkins, says may have put his team over the hump. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers find their ship in uncharted waters. They are 3-1 and one and tied with the Chicago Bears atop the NFC Central Division. Hi, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler along with Dan Jacobs, and welcome to Texas Stadium here in Irving. 3-1 and one for the Bucs right now, Dan, and the best start since 1979. I think people are finally starting to take the Buccaneers as a real team. Right? And Ray Perkins says we've got a feeling, but one of the reasons why they've got that feeling is because of Gary Anderson, number 40. Over 422 yards now in a combined offense. This guy is the guy that everybody has to focus in on when they play the Buccaneers. They try to limit his number of touches, that is, pass receptions as well as running the football. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will have the football first. Ken Willis, another rookie place kicker, will tee it up. Reggie Cobb, the deep man of a trio for the Tampa Bay Bucks. The Bucks are three and one, the Cowboys one and three, and a short kickoff will go out of bounds. And this is a problem that Willis had a week ago. In fact, of his three regular kickoffs against the New York Giants in last week's loss, his kicks landed at the 10, the 8, and the 9. And this time, he knocks one out of bounds, so the Bucks will go to work at the 35 under the leadership of Vinny Testaverde, the top-ranked quarterback in the NFL. Pat Haggerty, our referee. Vinny Testaverde with a 104.5 rating. Tops in the business. Brings his offense up. There's his numbers on the season. Tampa Bay first down. Bruce Hill in motion. Anderson and Gary Anderson who has had a brilliant start this year picks up five on his first carry behind a line that is improving. Gruber an all pro with Dill Bubba Grimes at the center. Ian Beckles Rob Taylor and Ron Hall is the tight end. Gary Anderson, who just picked up five on his first carry with Reggie Cobb, the wide receivers, Mark Carrier, and Bruce Hill. Fred, their skill people are exceptional now in the Buccaneers. Second down at five, Tampa Bay. At its own 40. Reggie Cobb slips and falls. Got about two as he regained his balance. Lockhart and Norton got over there to make the stop. And that Dallas defense, Daniel Stubbs, Dean Hamill, Danny Noonan, and Jim Jeffcoat up front. Eugene Lockhart, 222 tackles a year ago on the inside. Jack Del Rio and Kenny Norton flank him. The secondary for the Cowboys, Ike Holt and Robert Williams. The corners, James Washington starts with Fitz Albritton at safety. So the Bucks come up with their first third down situation of the day, third and three. Early completes it. Carrier lost the ball. The Cowboys have covered it midfield. They're going to say no catch. Incomplete. As he had it momentarily. Didn't have possession. We'll get another look at it. And coming across on a slant route, one thing you want to do is cover up the football first of all. And that's what happened here. The ball just pops out before he hits the ground. But the question is, was that a fumble? I believe it was a fumble because as he went to the ground, the ball dropped out. His knee was not down. It's apparent from that replay. Tampa Bay gets this punt off. They may have picked up a break there. Harris deep for Dallas back at the 10. Mark Royals. With your putter. Takes it high. Harris with a fair catch, and he'll take it right at the 20 yard line. 38 yard punt, and a fair catch by Harris. Just underway here at Texas Stadium, and the Cowboys will huddle up as a group on the far side of the field, something they started a week ago against New York. They collect that posse over there and get ready to come out and do business offensively. You know, when you think about this game, you're looking for the Buccaneers. Now they want to see if they are truly an established uh, football team, if they have come to that next level. For Dallas, it's another opportunity to wake things up. 2-and-A, Kerr, Stepnoski, Giesick, Newton, and Novacek to the tight end for Dallas. 
The backfield behind Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith, and Alonzo Highsmith, Dennis McKinnon, and Calvin Martin, the wideouts. First down, Dallas. Aikman to Smith, then he's going to lose yardage. Tampa Bay all over that. Roderick Thomas out there, and it's going to be a loss of about four. Defensively for the Buccaneers. Up front, Reuben Davis, Kirk Jarvis, and Jim Scow, who came in the trade from Cincinnati. What a set of linebackers. Roderick Thomas, Eugene Marv, Urban Randall, Winston Moss. Maybe the best set in the National Football League, Brad. And the secondary, Reynolds, Haddix, who has three interceptions, and Hamilton and Robinson have been playing since their Penn State days together. So Dallas started exactly how they hoped they wouldn't. They lost three. Second and 13. Quick throw out to Martin. Broke a tackle, and he's got it up near the 28-yard line where Mark Robinson made the stop. It's funny, when we talked to uh, Jimmy Johnson the other day, he said, you know, this offense that we have with the Cowboys is a quarterback-oriented offense, and it's something that you, he's not going to try to run the football down your throat. They like to throw the control passing game, such as that one, and they just threw to Kelvin Martin, and that's how they think they're going to beat them. He says, we're definitely not a dominating run team, and we probably never will be. <laughs> Let's see if they keep it on the ground here. Third down along two. Emmett Smith. First down Dallas. He's out to the 34 yard line. Eugene Marv in on the stop along with Harry Hamilton. Nice blocking on the left side of the offensive line, but one of the things Emmett might want to look at when he looks at this tape is watch if he follows his guard. I believe that's a Crawford Kerr, 68. If he follows him all the way outside instead of tucking it up right there, he may gain extra yardage because you see 85 McKinnon is also out there throwing a block from the wide receiver position. That's where you get those extra 15 yards on a big run. So the Cowboys have worked it to their own 35. Emmett Smith again behind Highsmith. And he's out over the 40 to about the 42-yard line. So I'll tell you one thing. When Alonzo Highsmith comes out of that backfield from the fullback position, people will go down. That's one thing. He said, you know, so here's a guy, number 32, that says that he would rather be an offensive lineman than a fullback. Now, how many backs you've ever heard say that? But that's what he can do, clear out that path for you. He's built more like a linebacker <laughs> or a lineman, that's for sure. He was a linebacker all of his life. And if he had his brothers, he'd go back and play a little outside linebacker and a little offensive line. Smith got seven, second and three. Here's Alonzo Highsmith. He didn't run it bad either, does he? First down, Dallas. Eugene Marbs and Mark Robinson combined on the stop. Final big wave weekend early for the field goal. Seattle looked pretty good on Monday night. I tell you one thing too, this Dallas team looks pretty good. When people talk about them, the one and three, and it's a G, well, are they back? You know, are they having a tough time? You talk to the people in the Buccaneers, they say this team can fool you. That just like we were a couple of years ago, you come in and you're not paying enough attention to what they're doing, they're going to beat you. First and ten, two first downs on the drive for Dallas. McKinnon to the near side, Martin to the top of your screen. Tampa Bay with a blitz on Aikman. In and out of the hands of Alonzo Highsmith. It would have been a short gain if they dropped him there, but he doesn't hold on. It'll be second and ten. And that's one of the things that Alonzo told us that about this Dallas offense and his opportunities here as opposed to Houston, where he was simply a blocker. He says now he's going to have the opportunity to come out of the backfield and show some of the skills that he displayed at when he was at uh, Miami. He said he hadn't run a pass pattern since he was in college until yeah. he came to Dallas. <laughs> Tommy Agee checks in for him at the fullback spot in the Dallas eye at second and ten. Smith goes airborne to get to midfield. Reuben Davis got over there to undercut him. You know, uh, just early on, so far in this drive, Brad, Tampa Bay defensively looks like they're just kind of a little bit off sync. And as a result, they have not really stopped the Cowboys at this point. A dangerous kind of an attitude to take right from the top because you want to come out and be aggressive defensively right away. And I'm sure Fred Bruni, their defensive coordinator, is probably now saying, hey, guys, let's turn it up a couple of notches. They may turn it up on Aikman here on third down and six. At the midfield stripe, Aikman works from the spread with four wide receivers. And he keeps it on the ground as Smith. 
He won't get the first down. Got to the 46-yard line. Winston Moss stopped him there. And it's fourth down, and Dallas will have to give it up. That's the reason why I said those linebackers on the Buccaneers are probably the best set around. They've got overall great speed. Mike Saxon, who had a rough week last week, still almost 42 yards a kick. And he'll kick it away to Willie Drury. Saxon had punts of average 28.3 last week against the Giants. He says, anybody else, I might have been on my way out of town with a bus ticket and an apple. But Jimmy Johnson said, just hang in there. We know you can do the job. over and kick. Brewery's going to let it go. Dallas should be able to down it inside the five and the captain of their special teams Bill Bates drops it inside the five at about the three and a half. Nice job by Saxon. 43 yard kick and the Bucks will be in a hold offensively when we come back. No score here in Irving. 8.33 to go first quarter. No score here in Irving, Texas. And a perfectly placed punt by Mike Saxon as Ray Perkins' Tampa Bay offense in a hole down near the four-yard line. And this is one of those areas you call the red zone also offensively when you're coming out. Now, this field here in Dallas has some stripes down on the field, and we always talk about the red zone and the blue zone. When you're coming out, it can be the blue zone. And you see these stripes right down to the 20-yard line. We'll show them to you a little later on, too. They're multicolored white, red, and blue. America's hash marks. <laughs> First and ten, Tampa. Nice job by Cobb to break one tackle, and he got out across the seven-yard line. Daniel Stubbs in on the stop. You know, we talk so much about Ray Perkins and the success that he's having this year with the Buccaneers, but he's not uh, a stranger to success. Uh, you look at his record with the New York Giants, he really started building that team into the Super Bowl caliber team that they became. Alabama had a successful run there, and now Tampa Bay, this year, they're really turning things around. You ask Ray Perkins, what concerns you? He says, I'm not concerned about anything. <laughs> worry me, worry. Second and seven. Draw play, Anderson. Nice open field hit near the 10-yard line. And that was Robert Williams, the right corner. When you talk to the Dallas defensive people, they told you that one of the things they knew they had to do better this week than they did last week was tackle. They said, if we can get in there and get the shoulder on Anderson and make sure that he doesn't get that extra run and make you miss, then we can ha we have a chance of staying in this game. If they can control Gary Anderson, they've got a chance to win it. It's amazing. Every team that talks about playing Tampa Bay says, Gary Anderson scares us to death. Yeah. <laughs> they all say the same thing. That time, Williams did a fine job and brings up third down at four from the gun. Testaverde completes it, but it is well short of the first down. John Harvey made the catch, and for the second time, it's three and out for Tampa Bay. They'll have to give it up. And this time, Royals will be kicking from his own end zone. This is why I was talking about you get in that dangerous lull. You don't do anything offensively, and then your defense has to go out, and they're struggling a little bit. All of a sudden, Dallas puts points on the board. Very critical situation now for Tampa Bay. The Cowboys appear to have the return on as Royals is about two yards deep in his end zone. Rod Harris back across the 50 in return formation for the Cowboys. This one could be returned. On the fly, Harris lost the handle. But Dallas is going to pick it up and have it at the 45-yard line. James Washington was right there, right place at the right time. Well, you talk about serendipity. James Washington now has got to be thinking, hey, I'm the luckiest guy in a Dallas Cowboy uniform picking up this fumble. That's Six, timing, folks. 620 to go first quarter, no score. Stadium, no score with 620 to go first quarter. Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggets with you. It's a family affair here. Mike and David Shula on opposite sides. David, the offensive coordinator for Dallas. Mike, the quarterback coach for the Buccaneers. Can you imagine what a dinner is like when they all get home? <laughs> a lot of X's and O's, O's on the table. O's. Mom's probably the best coach, though. Those salt shakers get moved a lot. First down, Dallas. Smith, big hole. He's going to have a Dallas first down at the 35-yard line. 
Mark Robinson brought him down, and Emmett Smith rips off an 11-yard pickup. You know, here's a guy, Emmett Smith, number 22, who's just having a lot of fun. We asked him, he said, did you regret leaving Florida early and all? He said, absolutely not. I made the decision myself. I like the decision, and I also like being here. And he's starting to enjoy his teammates a little bit more now, too. He's going to enjoy it a lot more if he has the kind of game that he has already started off with here. He led Dallas in rushing, coming in with only 104 yards at 63 against the Redskins a couple of weeks ago, which was his best outing, but today it looks like it may be more. First down. Quick over the middle, Nova check. The tight end to the 15. You know, one of the things that works so well against the Buccaneer defense, because they play a lot of zone, is when the tight end slips in between the seams. Now, watch here as the tight end, Jay Novacek, runs that seam route right down along the hash marks. Now, after that, you see there's a hole in there. He catches that between the defensive backs and the linebackers, and that's when this pass play is so effective. Troy Aikman hasn't had to throw often because of the running game, and it's got Dallas down to the 15. They go back to the ground, and Smith... Got maybe a yard. Eugene Marr got out there defensively along with Harry Hamilton from the secondary. Brad, when we talked earlier, we said about the mind frame that Tampa Bay has to be in here. When you become a winning football team, you have to understand when you get to games like this, you have to come out aggressively as well. You have to come out and play the Dallas Cowboys just like you played the Minnesota Vikings. That's when you know psychologically you've moved up to that next level. No gain for Smith. Brings up second and ten at the Bucks 15. Nova check in motion. Picked up about three with the reception, his second catch of the day. And Aikman is really starting to look to Novacek as he did a week ago. Yeah, he told us in the locker room for the game, he said, you know, we really feel like we've upgraded that position with uh, Jay Novacek and Robert Awal both coming over from the Cardinals. Two good receiving tight ends. and. Awalt's a little bit more of a regular tight end at 250 and about 6'5 or so, but Jay Novacek has the ability to split out wide, and he's got a little bit more speed than Robert does. 19 catches now for Novacek. You're going to add two more to the stat we just showed you, and he is the top receiving tight end as far as number of catches in the whole league. Third and seven. Aikman works from the shotgun. Got it to Novacek. Touchdown, Dallas. Wayne Haddix, an injured Tampa Bay Buccaneer in the end zone. Dennis McKinnon laid a block on him over there, it appeared. And Novacek, three catches in that drive, including one for six. And the reason why, too, is because, as you mentioned, Brad, when Dennis McKinnon's in the game, one of the things he does as a wide receiver is he will throw a block downfield. Now, watch him turn around right here and help Jay Novacek get into the end zone. Stops the pursuit right now. Novacek runs an excellent route. Haddock still down. Again, he is tied for the top spot in the NFC in interceptions with three. And he had the key pickoff last week that helped Tampa Bay beat Minnesota. And Novacek. 12-yard touchdown catch. Jay Novacek, uh, he and his wife have a 900-acre farm in Nebraska. And they came down here to Dallas, and they had to rent a farm down here. It's only 30 acres, you know, small spread. Small one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just enough room for the horses. That's right. But I'm sure everybody now is hoping that uh, Wayne Haddix can get up and get back at it. Once again, here's the play. Good protection for Aikman there. Has enough time to set it and deliver the football now. McKinnon on the block on a turn back on Haddox. It looked like Haddox had pulled up a little bit when he got the shot from McKinnon. But one thing Dennis McKinnon does, he's always done it throughout his career, is throw blocks down there for his people trying to score. It appeared as though Haddox, after slipping there and letting Novacek get in front of him, got a little lackadaisical and turned around and did slow down. And then he got deposited by McKinnon. And so... Our concern for Wayne Haddix, who's still down in the end zone. Don't forget, coming up tonight, right after 60 minutes, it'll be game two of the American League Championship Series. The Red Sox will host the Oakland A's. Probable starting pitchers tonight. Bob Walsh is going to go for uh, Welch, or rather for uh, Oakland, 127 games. 
Dana Kicker will start for Boston. Exciting game last night until the eighth inning. <laughs> <laughs> then it wasn't so close anymore. Got yeah, blown out. There's what we got coming up tonight on CBS. Oakland out in front of the series 1-0 after their big inning last night. Game two tonight from Fenway at 8 o'clock Eastern right here on CBS. I got to tell you, Brad, being in Chicago and watching the uh, the White Sox ch chase the Oakland A's all season long, you know, the White Sox had the third best record in baseball, and they're sitting at home watching this whole thing, and you've got to believe that they feel that uh, the future is right now in that American League uh, uh, West hoping that Wayne Haddix is okay. He's been down there on the ground for an awful long time. Of course, we'll try to get a report on him as soon as we possibly can. Wayne Haddix down, Dallas up by a touchdown. Three minutes and 28 seconds. Uh, if you get the buys and the situations, what's happening, why are these two teams on the field? Well, those fifth place teams, you know, uh, have to play when the other guys get, a, get some time off. The rest of the NFC, with the exception of Dallas, off this weekend. Ken Willis, rookie kicker into the point after. And the Cowboys of Jimmy Johnson go on top, 7-0, 328 to go in the first quarter. Dallas in front by a touchdown, 328 to go first quarter. It was Troy Aikman, 12 yards to Jane Novacek. And Ken Willis set to kick it away. Danny Peebles, who had a 55-yard return last week against Minnesota, the deep man for Tampa Bay. It'll come to the near side to Reggie Cobb. Nice high step by Cobb, and he's got room. Collard at the 48-yard line, but a 45-yard kickoff return for the rookie from Tennessee. Bill Bates, number 40, came down. And he just spilled himself out. He was going full speed now. He's over the other side of the screen. Now, the problem was for Dallas that nobody focused in on the running back. Everybody spread out coming down in the lanes. But at some point or another, you had to break down and get to the ball carry. And that didn't happen until he was at about the 50, uh, the 45-yard line or so. Boy, just what Tampa Bay needed, though, after giving up the touchdown. Great field position. The best they've had today, in fact. Here comes a blitz. Chester Verde got it to Carrier. It looks like it's going to be a first down near the 41. One of the other things that you've got to believe that Tampa Bay wants to do in this game, and it's something they've done all season long, we talked about it, is getting the ball to Gary Anderson. And here are some of his numbers uh, on the season so far. Rushing is at 67 attempts for 281 yards and three TDs. And he's a very available receiver as well. And as Dan said, before the game started, second in the league in total yards. That 422, second only to Johnny Johnson of the Phoenix Cardinals. First down, Tampa Bay. Reggie Cobb. Cuts back to the 36, where Danny Noonan met him, along with Eugene Lockhart. If I'm Reggie Cobb and Gary Anderson, I kind of like running over on that left side. You know, I've got uh, Paul Gruber over there. And Paul, needless to say, has grown up a little bit since he's been with uh, with the Buccaneers. I looked at him yesterday, and it's obvious he spent the offseason in the weight room because he looks outstanding. He's really got some great upper body now. A lot of people expect him to be a fixture in the Pro Bowl in years to come. Second and six. Bucks at the Dallas 36. Another blitz. Anderson. Cuts back, first down and more. Inside the 25. Let's go to New York for an update on Houston and San Francisco and Greg Gumbel. Well, Brad, after the Oilers picked off a Joe Montana pass, Warren Moon went right to work. 30 yards to Drew Hill for the touchdown. And with the extra point, Houston now leads the Niners 14-0 in the first. Back to Texas Stadium. The run and shoot. Doing its number down the road a piece, as they say down here. <laughs> Tampa Bay moves inside the Dallas 25, the 24-yard line, first down. Testaverde skips one off his intended receiver and almost intercepted, intended for Anderson. <laughs> Pro 
from the Tampa Bay locker room we get word the left knee of Wayne Haddix indeed is what was injured on that play we don't know the severity and we'll try to keep you posted but he is gone for the day for Ray Perkins defense second and ten Buccaneers Hill to the near side carrier to the left they'll keep it on the ground Anderson Got close to the 15. Yeah, but this is a little bit of that Gary Anderson make a miss there. You saw, I think it was Vince Albritton that just kind of slipped up in there, tried to put the shoulder on him. Gary Anderson will make those people in that secondary think twice when they come in and try to put the real hard knock on him because he's very slippery. Good blocking up front as well by his offensive line. Key third down situation coming up for the Bucks to try to keep this drive alive. Remember, this drive started at the 48-yard line after the nice kickoff return by Reggie Cobb. Cobb won't get there. Vince All Britain and Jack Del Rio combine on the stop, and Dallas stops Tampa Bay short. And it brings up fourth down in the waning moments of the first quarter. Dallas in front, 7-0 here in Irving. And they're going to force a field goal attempt by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But that field goal will have to wait. We played the first quarter in the Dallas Cowboys at home, leading the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 7-0 here in Texas. Back in Irving, Texas, with Dan Jiggetts, I'm Brad Nessler. 7-0 Cowboys over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers of Ray Perkins who are hoping to change that here momentarily with a field goal attempt. Dallas has already matched their first quarter statistics as far as scoring. In the previous four games they had scored only seven points and they already have seven. 33 yard attempt by Steve Christie. It is good. And he's good for the eighth time in nine tries this year. The Buccaneers are on the scoreboard. One play into the second quarter, it's 7-3 Dallas. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by the new generation of Oldsmobiles. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. Levi's 505 and 506 jeans. And by United Airlines, serving over 200 cities in the U.S. and around the world. Come fly the friendly skies. Steve Christie following the 33 yard field goal tees it up and set to kick away to James Dixon and Alexander Wright for Dallas Christie's kickoffs the reason he won the job in the preseason over Donald Igwe Buike the depth of his kickoffs and the fact that not too many people have been returning kicks this year Dixon had a notion and decided against it. So the Cowboys will work from the 20. You know, when you go back to the third down play, now the reason why the play wasn't successful is watch right here. The running back comes out. He's going to try to search this linebacker right here, making the pursuit, and that's uh, Ken Norton Jr. Now he's going to come over to pursuit now. The, the problem is if your running back can't find that linebacker, then he's right in on the play. And it's uh, Jamie Lawson, number 38 for the Buccaneers. You saw him just kind of take off a field. you got to sit back, turn back around, and find that inside linebacker. Kelly Norton did a fine job forced the field goal and now that Dallas offensive group huddles as a unit and brings it right up to the line of scrimmage. First and ten Cowboys. Johnston the lone setback. He gets the call. Not much room maybe a yard. Those linebackers are not going to give you too much opportunity. Murphy and Randall combine on the hit. If Irving Randall continues to have the same kind of season all season long that he's been having so far, expect to see him in Honolulu, and those orange <laughs> colors will look very nice out there on the beach in Wacky Key. No huddle for the Cowboys. Aikman took a shot. Now he's going to run with it. Flags are down as Aikman took a shot with his slide at the 36-yard line, a pickup of 14, but again a penalty marker down in the secondary. You got to take it off. Dallas is indicating that it is against Tampa Bay. Holding defense. 
that's unusual. Well, the, the reason why they make the call is because if Dallas is trying to pass the football and you hold up the receiver, then Troy Aikman is forced to run the football. Right there, we thought it had a little face mask on Troy Aikman, but uh, the holding apparently took uh, took place off screen. Troy took a nice shot down there later on. It's a good thing Aikman 6'4", 218, that's for sure. Troy, Ray Perkins wants to know who the foul is on. And the Cowboys with a first down just outside their own 40-yard line. McKinnon and Harris, the wide receivers for Troy Aikman. Calvin Martin in a slot, so he's got a three wide receiver set. Intended for Harris and complete. Aikman is a big strapping quarterback. We talked to him in the locker room before the game, and he's all of that 6'4", 218, isn't he, Dan? He sure is. But the interesting thing is, you go in and talk to, you know, here's a top-rated quarterback, you know, guy that's making a lot of money. And everything. Yeah, what is he doing before the game? He's in there reading the game program. <laughs> you know, See if they, they spelled his name right. Yeah, <laughs> they give him a free game program, and he's reading that. <laughs> he's a young, good-looking guy, and backup quarterback Babe Loffenberg says, hey, the guy owns the city. He's so popular. He says the part of the city he doesn't own, he could buy it. <laughs> Second and ten. Johnston out of the middle. Still going to bring up third down and almost six. You know, one of the things the Cowboys were concerned about coming into this game, Brad, was protecting the quarterback, and they've made some uh, adjustments along the offensive line, and one of the things that happened as a result of that is good pass protection. Now, you seem to stop it up in there. Outside rush, little games, all of that. Get those big bodies in there real close. Make it real nice and cozy in there, and then they can't get through. Well, they spotted Johnston out to the 46-yard line. So it's going to be third down and a long four. 7-3. Dallas in front here in the second quarter. They'll keep it on the ground to Emmett Smith. He's going to be close. He had to get it shaded into Tampa territory, and I don't think he got there. Looks like they're going to spot it on the Dallas side of the 50. That'll be short of the first down. The crowd's a little disappointed that the Cowboys are not going to go for it in this situation. But, uh, and again, if you don't make it, you know, they'll leap on you if you're Jimmy Johnson. Well, they've got a punter who over the last five years, nobody has put more inside the 20-yard line on the opposition than this, this young man, Mike Saxon. So they're going to... Try to tell him to drop one inside the five. He did that once already today. No one to hold him and no one to fold him. <laughs> Drury, the deep man for Tampa. Well, he did his job, but they couldn't quite get down there to cover it. 50-yard kick for Saxon. Tampa Bay will have it at their 20 when we come back. Michael Irving along with Alonzo Highsmith and Vinny Testaferi. Those guys hooked up a little bit when they were at Miami. 21 and 3 over two years and Vinny was there. Not too bad. Michael Irvin just reactivated off injured reserve there, number 88 this week, and he should see some action sometime today. Jimmy Johnson says he's just about back. Just about full speed. Testaverde, two out of four for 14 yards here early. Anderson. And he gets to the 27 in a hurry. Look back at the play that the Buccaneers had, that third down situation where they had to go for the field goal because they were not successful. Now, Testaverde brings this offense back, and he says, now are we mature enough now to make the long drive, take our ball club down there, score a touchdown, and put ourselves ahead in this football game? If they reach that level of maturity they want to get to, then they do that now. This guy certainly helps. Anderson's got 37 yards on five attempts. Here he comes again. Great cutback. Flags down as he picks up the first down at the 35. And again, a penalty marker down at the 30. I've seen officials ruin more good runs than any, <laughs> than any defense around. Boy, what a nice cutback block, dude. That's a shame. Here in the second quarter, 7-3, Dallas in front. Troy Aikman's put up impressive numbers, and we mentioned Gary Anderson and how he's done on the ground with 37 yards already. He had 108 last week in the win over Minnesota. And the Buccaneers are moving backward because of a holding penalty on that last play, as we indicated, Brad. Ian Beckles was caught for the holding penalty. And that 
that backs up the Cowboys inside their own 18 yard line. Kestenberry changes it up at the line. Expected blitz. Nice job by Danny Noonan. Danny Noonan, fourth year out of Nebraska. You mentioned that uh, you heard uh, Benny Testaverde checking off. That's because that Dallas defense came up. All the linebackers up on the line of scrimmage. It looked like a eight-man front. He checks off, then they pull out. And right away now he says, okay, now my, my quick pattern is off. And a straight four-man rush brought him down after a short game. Third and nine, Tampa Bay from the shotgun. Three wideouts for Testaverde. On the run. And he's got the first down. Vinny Testaverde, a big, strong quarterback who had his best rushing day of the year against the Vikings last week, and he picks up 12 here, Dan. He's got some help from uh, his backfield, too, uh, on the play. John Harvey throws a nice block for him when he realizes that uh, Vinny's going to scramble out of there. Now, Vinny never won for being very graceful after he gets downfield. <laughs> he kind of stumbles for the first down, but you see Harvey right there sticking to it, man. That's it, getting it done downfield. You know, on this Tampa Bay team, and this will change shortly, maybe even today, he is the career rushing leader for the Tampa Bay Bucks because all the running backs weren't here a year ago. Career active rushing leader, I should say. Gary Anderson. He'll be changing that shortly. That's what we're talking about. He picks up about five. Gary Anderson can change that in about three runs. <laughs> It'll be interesting to watch the matchup between Anderson trying to run up inside. You know, they like to run inside and then have him break it outside, but it'll be interesting to watch the matchup today between him and Eugene Lockhart uh, for the Dallas defense. Eugene, as we mentioned earlier, 222 tackles last season, and so far he's leading the Cowboys this season as well. He says, all I want my outside linebackers to do is funnel him toward me. <laughs> Anderson and Lockhart helps on the stop. Dean Hamill also there. Well, there you have it. <laughs> the definitive Eugene Lockhart. Eugene, the hitting machine. He had yesterday, when we saw him in the locker room yesterday, leaving the Dallas locker room, he had a couple of knee braces, you know, some some stuff for his, some ointment for his shoulder. He's, he's a little banged up, but he's going to play. He said, there's no question I'm going to be there and, and be on time. Now, here he is coming on a blitz. You see him just react very nicely, step over. You wouldn't know this guy had shoulder problems, knee problems, and toe problems. Testaverde with four wide receivers on third and five. Incomplete. Frank Pillow, the intended receiver, and he took a big shot from Robert Williams on the corner. Yeah, but the problem is for Dallas is balls are popping up in the air. The people are popping balls off, and Dallas is not intercepting any. They got one interception this season. They need turn. And that's Rod Harris. Back deep for Dallas. 8.32 to go in the half. 7-3. And the left side of the Bucks front appeared to move. Yeah, that's one of those hut hut tweaks, you know, where <laughs> you're supposed to pull the other guys off, but the defense sometimes can jump because you're afraid you're going to get beat on special teams. I think it was Sidney Coleman, number 53, right there in the middle that jumped. Yeah, he saw, I saw Sidney throw that head down. He, he was the guy. Sidney's like, oh, man, I wonder if Ray's looking down. He still doesn't <laughs> want to look, does he? <laughs> Looks over there. Yeah, this steely blue. He's standing right there looking in the huddle. Oh, boy. No contact, therefore no foul. All right, no. No contact, no foul. Kind of like the basketball we played the other day. <laughs> <laughs> end over end punt. Harris will have a chance from the 13. Out to about the 24 yard line goes Rod Harris. Eight minutes and 22 seconds to go in the half. Dallas holds on to the 7 3 lead. Back in Irving, Dallas 7-3, 8.22 to go. 
Don't forget, next Sunday, we'll get things underway at 12.30 Eastern with the NFL today. It's a doubleheader weekend next week. Emmett Smith on first down. Out near the 32-yard line. Next week, our doubleheader action on CBS. San Francisco and Atlanta, big one in the NFC West. And Green Bay and Tampa Bay, maybe for the uh, lead in the NFC Central. And the Giants in Washington do battle in the East. That'll be a great one. Dallas and Phoenix. Dallas also. thinking, yeah, if they can get through this game, if they can win this ball game and then go on to Phoenix, they'll be in pretty good shape. They see Tampa Bay again in two weeks due to the strange scheduling quirk. Smith behind his blocking on second down. Looks like he's going to have a first down at the 35. Fred, I'm sure a lot of the people back in uh, Florida remember him from his days at Florida. It wasn't that long ago. Uh, but one of the things that's interesting about this young man, is I asked him, I said, are you taking care of your offensive line? Because that's starting to take care of you pretty good. You see the blocking up front, Nate Newton there throwing. And uh, he said, no, you know, I haven't been able to take him out to dinner yet. I said, why not? He says, my credit cards haven't gotten here yet. I said, oh, you hate to hear that. <laughs> Pretty weak excuse for a millionaire rookie, isn't it? He's got 46 yards. And they'll blow it dead. Somebody in motion early. Legal procedure, Dallas makes it first and 15 when they walk it off. 6.57 to go in the half. The Cowboys leading the Bucks 7 to 3. As we were talking to Jimmy Johnson, we we're all talking about that offensive line, and he said that he felt that they were, you know, they're pretty good run blockers right now, but they don't run the ball that much. And it's apparent now that maybe he's thinking, hey, look, we can drain a little bit of the clock. Maybe this line is coming into its own in terms of being able to go in those long drives now. A.G. and Smith in the dual backfield for Dallas. Draw play to Smith. Not too much. Jim Scow made the initial hit defensive end for the Buccaneers. Emmett Smith, who would have been a senior at Florida, and says, you know, I just couldn't take another change in the offensive scheme. He yeah, had he said three he, of them. He down said there. he never got to realize his potential there because uh, every season he was learning a new offense, and uh, now it's going to be the first time that he can really settle down and just run one offense. And Steve Spurrier's offense a little more pass-oriented, that's for sure. Second and 12, Cowboys. Aikman, great catch. Alexander Wright. Great catch by, by Wright, but the thing that I, I'm also very pleased with in that situation is watch the way that Troy Aikman stands in. He recognizes that he's getting pressure right up in his face. Now, watch him sit in the pocket, take the pressure, and just deal the football off. That's growing up in maturity uh, for a young quarterback. Here's another look at it now. You can imagine how difficult it is when people are collapsing on you to sit back there and toss that football like that and throw it accurately. Alexander Wright, the rookie from Auburn, laid out for the catch. Brings up third down at two. Here comes a blitz. Calvin Martin, first down Dallas. Aikman read that one beautifully. Hey. Kmart put, put on more shakes there than Kmart has sales. <laughs> he, he had about 35 shakes there, and I think he gained two yards. There's another guy that the Cowboys are looking forward to getting back. Uh, completely healthy, was injured last season, and was one of their key receivers. Uh, went down along with Michael Irving. Jimmy Johnson told us, he said, I like the direction we're headed, and he thinks that, you know, they're going there, doing the right kinds of things. He said, yeah, every now and then, it gets a little frustrating when you don't win, and, and that re-supports what you say to your players, but uh, they're coming along. Toss sweep to Smith. Cuts back inside the 45 to the 44. Jim Scow got a piece of him to trip him up, along with Eugene Marr. Last year, of course, the Cowboys won only one over the Redskins. And Jimmy Johnson said, quite frankly, it was a case of the Redskins not playing well that day, and we played pretty good. We're touring now, though, as a football team. And that is apparent in this ballgame. San Francisco getting back in it with Houston. Hail, hail. 
Second down and six for the Cowboys at the 44 of Tampa Bay. Tommy Agee. And he battles his way to the 40. Tough run by the third-year pro out of Auburn. Winston Moss and Irvin Randall finally dragged the big fella down. They got him in plan B from Kansas City, and they're very pleased with the acquisition. As a, as a guy who they really felt that uh, could add a lot to their backfield. Now, Emmett Smith adds a lot, too, because he's blocking on this play. And the little guy gets up in there and just gets kind of nasty with those big linebackers. <laughs> now, look at him. He's helping this guy. Hey, Emmett, that's against the rules. You can't push your own man. <laughs> A.G., you know, he had to wonder, hey, what do I have to do? He got drafted by Seattle, played behind John L. Williams. They traded him to Kansas City. Christian Okoye's there. Now he comes and he's behind Alonzo Highsmith, but he had a nice carry there. Third down and two. Smith looks to be a first down for the Cowboys. Coming into this game, I think he was successful on six of seven uh, attempts in third down situation, so uh, he's not a stranger to that, taking advantage of the opportunity. Okay, now A.G. gets to pay back Emmett Smith on the play. You see him throw the key block right up inside there. I think that's Urban Randall that he gets on. He takes out the knee. Nice block, nice and low. Close enough that they'll have a look. Looks like they might have it by the length of the football. Maybe two lengths. First down, Cowboy. 2.39 to go in the half. 7-3 Dallas, and the Cowboys driving. You know, you see Ray Perkins there shielding his eyes. Uh, the reason why is here in this Dallas Stadium, they put the visitors in the sun. And so you're going to get that afternoon sun in your face the whole day. And the Dallas sideline is nice and cool. Nice and shady over there for Jimmy Johnson. There's a great look at it. Well, it's brutal, too, I tell you. The stadium with a hole in the middle. They left that hole up there so God could look on every Sunday at the Cowboys. Ninth play of the drive. Aikman in trouble. And the Bucks with their first sack of the day. Roderick Thomas and a Winston Moss. Former number one draft choice picks up the sack. Pressure comes from the left side of your screen. That's 51 Moss right there. Takes the back out and just simply runs right up on top of Troy Aikman. Somebody's got to block that guy. If you don't see him being picked up by a running back, you're Troy Aikman. You go, hey, I'm in a whole lot of trouble. We worked our way down to the two-minute warning. Troy Aikman and the Cowboys will have a second and 18 when we come back. Dallas holding to the lead. Back at Texas Stadium in Irving. It is a hot one today. And that could take its toll before it's all over. Yeah, if you see those linemen are down there in that cool air. Always look for the cool air. You'll find all the offensive linemen. Bubba Grimes, who played his high school ball, in Tyler, Texas, had a lot of relatives at today's game. His Buccaneers on the short end, 7-3 to three here with two minutes to go in the half. Troy Aikman in trouble again. Roderick Thomas again. And he just simply beat Kevin Gogan. Gogan, number 66, tried to step out and block him outside. Now, watch Gogan. He's up high now, 66, stepping out, trying to block him, and just gets out of position right here. Good, strong outside move there into the sack. One of the things the Cowboys did last week that they're not doing so far was protecting the quarterback throughout the whole football game, and they've given up a couple right now in this drive. Gogan goes out, and 2 and a comes back into that tackle spot on the left side to line up against Roderick Thomas, the Sandman, they used to call him, because he put a few people to sleep over the years. <laughs> Third down and a mile for the Cowboys. Intercepted. Eric Everett has it back to the 46-yard line. 23-yard return for Everett. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will have a minute 14 to work, trailing 7-3. 7-3 Dallas, but Tampa Bay will have a chance now with 114 to go in the half, thanks to the turnover. And they are plus five on turnovers this season. They've turned a lot of them into points. They would like to get at least three more off that Eric Everett interception. That's clear part of the reason they're one and three and the Bucs are three and one. Benny Testaverde will work from the shotgun with three wide receivers, but he'll keep it on the ground. Anderson with a convoy in front. And Isaac Holt broke through to knock him out of bounds. 
I was watching uh, Ian Beckles, number 62, for the Contact. Buccaneers on that uh, on that screen, uh, not the, that lead outside. Now both of the guards are outside, and Scott Dill, 76, is along with them, just trying to see if they're staying up and running through their blocks. And Dill gets a nice little pancake there, but uh, Beckles wants to get in there a little bit tight and then push that guy all the way to the sideline. Isaac Hole, a pretty strong corner, 6'2 and about 200 pounds, and he didn't get enough of it. Did stop the clock, though. Second down at seven at midfield. Wide open is Anderson. To the 39. Penalty marker down to the backfield. And we're going to have a holding. They'll bring it back. Tampa Bay's had a couple of occasions when, when things went well, suddenly they weren't, and they would have had the football at the 38 of Dallas. Instead, it's way back at their own 40. Greg and Terry coming up at halftime, scores and highlights of other games here in week five of the NFL season. Third penalty against Tampa Bay on the day. And that was a big, big play. It sure was. Awesome. Cowboys with their prevent in there against what is essentially a four wide receiver offense for Testaverde. He's in trouble and lost the ball. Jimmy Jones and Danny Stubbs and Vinny Testaverde just got caught in a Miami Vice. A couple of old teammates. <laughs> Yeah, but good composure on the part of Testaverde because the ball pops out here. You see, he's looking for the ball all the way. And we talked to uh, Jimmy Johnson. He told us one of the things about Testaverde is that when you wrap him up, you got to really give him a shot because he remembers a game when they were at Louisville and they're playing against Louisville, a corner blitz. Guy hits him, and he says to this day, Vinny didn't know that the guy hit him. <laughs> Danny Stubbs told us it's going to be nice to see Vinny, but I never got to hit him in college. And he had that look in his eye, too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so Tampa Bay... Had great field position a few moments ago before we saw the flag, and now with the sack, they're way back at their own 28-yard line. And yeah, that's why I was saying it was a big, big play for them and a big loss because suddenly, psychologically, as an offense, now you're all the way backed up, and you can say, "Gee, we have to make up all that yardage." And you still, at that time, they had a minute, two seconds left on the clock, so it changes your thinking completely. They've added time back on the clock, which now is 53 showing. And the Cowboys in front, 7-3. to three. Less than a minute to play in the half. Dallas with the lead. Dallas with the lead, 7-3. As we approach halftime, 53 seconds left for the Bucs to try to do something with it. But they've got third down and 29 to go. You think they're going to pass, Brad? <laughs> now watch him with a quick draw to Andy. <laughs> There it comes. To the 35. And the Cowboys want a timeout. Yeah, because they get the ball back, you know, after the punting situation with 46 seconds left on the clock and maybe in decent field position. So Tampa Bay will have to give it up to Dallas. We'll take it back from here the 22 yard line. I don't know how Royals found a window to kick that thing through a 44 yard punt. He had to pull a little magic off to get this ball through. Now watch the pressure coming from outside on both sides. And right there, he just squeezed the ball off. But the problem was for Dallas was they didn't focus in on the foot of the punter. They kind of went to where he was instead of where he ended up. Would that have been a big play for the Cowboys? But Royals did the job. And somehow that punt had eyes. Here comes your posse huddle. <laughs> They're on the field. Dallas from its own 22 from the shotgun. Aikman had time and almost threw another interception. Rodney Rice had his hands on it. I tell you, the last couple of passes that Troy Aikman has thrown, he's done a good job of throwing uh, into that total team coverage defensively. He's, uh, he's sunk both of them in there in uh, really critical areas. And one thing he's got to learn is if you don't have that opportunity to squeeze the ball in there and then put it up in the fifth row, don't take that chance. 
Emmett, especially when you're down back up on your 22. Emmett Smith checks back in for the Cowboys with now 33 seconds remaining in the half. Martin, Irvin, Novacek, and McKinnon, the wide receivers. And the inside handoff to Smith. Out to the 30. Anderson and Smith have had very, very similar days to this point. Cowboys are going to let it run. Jimmy Johnson, I don't think, exactly wanted that to be the case. No, I think he wanted a couple more plays out of that one. But his Cowboys will head to the locker room at halftime with the lead. The Cowboys at halftime leading by a score of 7-3 over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Very healthy averages, 5.8 for Anderson and 4.8 for Emmett Smith. You want your two backs to have those kind of numbers, but you really don't want your passing game to have equivalent numbers. I mean, they're just not getting it done in the air today. That's right. When Tampa Bay has thrown, uh, I think, five or six passes, and they've had about 15 runs, and Dallas is pretty even right now. They've thrown the ball 14 times and ran at 17, so they're a little bit more balanced out than Tampa Bay is. Last week, Vinny Testaverde, who's the top-ranked quarterback in the NFL, threw only 19 passes. That in an overtime win over the Minnesota Vikings. Today has five passes at halftime is all. And when you look at those numbers and you start analyzing and say it's hard to believe he was the NFC player of the month in September, I'm sure Vinny would like to put that football up in the air a little bit more more today. He said it didn't bother him that he wasn't passing as much as he has in the past, but I'm sure now he wants to start throwing the ball. you got to think Bruce Hill and Mark Carrier and those guys are going to have to have their hands on the football a little bit more in the second half if Tampa's to come from behind and win. They trail 7-3 at intermission. Aikman has a touchdown pass. He's also thrown an interception that really didn't hurt the Cowboys as badly as we thought it might because Eric Everett picked it off and gave Tampa Bay great field position before halftime, but they weren't able to capitalize and turn it into points. Steve Christie has it teed up. I'm sure, Brad, that uh, Ray Perkins went in and had a little chat with his club about what it takes to be a championship caliber football team at halftime, and it could believe it wasn't a nice discussion. The kick. Alexander right a couple yards deep, and the rookie will bring it out. Maybe paid the price. Got it across the 18. That's about it. Bruce Perkins down there, the special teams, put a shot on him. Alexander Wright is a guy, they say runs a 4-2, 4 40 and uh, Jimmy Johnson said this guy is going to be a difference maker for the Cowboys down the line. It's hard to coach speed. It makes you look real good if you're a coach. He got a guy that's running that fast. He says he's not one of those guys that you have to say if he learns to catch or if he learns to run patterns. He can do that right now. It's just a matter of experience. There you see the Dallas ground game has definitely improved in one half, doing better than normally for a whole game. They pick up where they left off. Emmett Smith again. Smith out to about the 27-yard line. Emmett Smith, you know, first-round draft choice and all the rest of that. We talked to him. We said, what do you like to do? He says, you know, I've got a train set at home. He says, now I'm going to buy a bigger train set. And I also have a toy. He wants to get a uh, jet plane, a model jet plane, to play with that as well. So little train wants a big train or a bigger train. He can probably buy a normal-sized train. <laughs> Here he comes. And he's going to get a first down as he went airborne behind his offensive line. Jimmy Johnson said yesterday, you know, this is a game we could win. It's, he said, maybe the biggest game we've had since I've been here, which sounds strange when you're talking about playing Tampa Bay, but... If they turn the corner here, it could be uh, pretty good down the road for him. And what he's looking at is the maturity of his team, if they can come in and win a tough ball game against a, a good opponent like Tampa Bay. Aikman to throw on first down. McKinnon, nice move. And he's got it out where he was face masked at the 45. They're going to tack on extra yardage after a 16-yard pickup. Silky D is now playing for the big D. Silky D has always had good moves, Dennis McKinnon. And, and one of the things that he does after the catch is he runs well. A couple of shakes there, and then he gets past Rice. But that's an experienced receiver, knowing which way to cut. And you see the face mask right there as he goes out of bounds. 
Rodney Rice got his hand in the cage, so they'll tack some extra yardage on. Jimmy Johnson told us that Dennis McKinnon, what he brought to this team as a plan B guy, was just absolutely invaluable in terms of the, the intangibles and the experience and maturity. Number 31, defense. First down. Yeah, we got it already, Pat. Rodney Rice. Not a flagrant face mask, so they'll move it just into Buccaneer territory. Irving, Texas, Texas Stadium, where the Cowboys lead 7-3 here early third quarter. Alonzo Highsmith this time picks up two or three. Nate Newton and Reuben Davis had a little chat at the end of that play. Nate Newton, who's been moved to right tackle this season. There he is, number 61. And he has slimmed down, folks. He's down to about 314 or so from a high. They said it was around 360 or so, but he looks great. We saw him out in the practice field. He's running well. He's running extra after practice. Got into a good weightlifting program. And, uh, they say that you know this guy can be a pro bowler down the line. He's got exceptionally quick feet. They call him the kitchen. His brother, Tim Newton, plays defense for the Bucks. They call him the ice box. Play action for Aikman. Oh, Emmett Smith didn't know that was headed his way. Hey, Nate said, I can run with the ball. Get off me. Uh, those, <laughs> those linemen still want to get their hands on the football. You saw him, then he had to go back and tell the defensive guys, I could have ran it. I could have ran it. No problem. <laughs> now, the problem on this one was Emmett Smith didn't realize that if you get a little quick action on the quarterback, he's going to dump it off to you. Aikman had to dump it out there, and uh, Emmett Smith never turned around for it. And there's Newton. There's Nate. Third down, still six and a half. It's got to be a big switch, though, from guard to tackle. It is, but, the, you know, playing right tackle is a little bit easier because everything is natural. If you're right-handed, it's a little bit easier to play out there than if they've moved him to left tackle, which is always a hard position to play. Third down and seven. Three wide outs, and Novacek in a slot right for Aikman from the gun. High snap. He handles it. Look out. There's Broderick Thomas again. His third of the day. I, I like what Broderick's doing over there. See, he's got some blood on his uniform. He's making a couple of sacks in the ball game. He's beating a pretty good offensive tackle in Mark Tuanay, the left tackle over there for the Cowboys. But, you know, he's got the whole thing working. The jersey's tied up in the back. <laughs> Watch this rush now. A little shake and bake there now. He's going to dip that shoulder and rip into the quarterback. And that's simply speed and agility beating an offensive tackle. He's got blood on his pants, and Troy Aikman's got some on his jersey. So you be the judge. One of those guys is having a little trouble. They've met often enough, I'm sure, in Aikman's opinion. Sacks into punt. Nice high spiral. Drury lets it go. And the Cowboys' Bill Bates will down it again inside the five. Forty-nine yard punt. And Bates right where he had to be again, the captain of the special teams. 12.05 to go third quarter. Dallas clings to a lead. Broderick Thomas, and boy, he's been hot today, Dan. Yeah, three sacks on a day. That uh, ties the Buccaneer record. Leroy Selman had uh, three way back when. I wonder if he got him against me. <laughs> and there's Broderick in there. As I said, he's got the whole thing working today. You see he's got his jersey tied up and back just for air conditioning purposes, and he's over on that sideline now cooling off after three quarterback sacks. He's a drag racing fan, like Shirley Muldowney. He's been doing a little cha-cha on Troy Aikman so far today. And again, the Bucks start inside their own 10. Anderson somehow got back to the line of scrimmage. And the thing that's got to disturb Ray Perkins is if the Buccaneers are running the football down there, Gary Anderson hits in the hole, and there's nobody there throwing extra blocks on the backside. Now, the thing that the Buccaneers have to start doing is throwing the football. Vinny Testaverde has got to improve his passing numbers in this second half. They go to the wide receiver. Ray Perkins says he likes that 60-40 blend run pass, but he's got to open it pretty soon. This is a bad spot to try to do it, that's for sure. There's Hall, a tight end. That's a first down, Tampa Bay. Rod Hall with a first down catch for Tampa Bay. We've got baseball coming up tonight right here on CBS. How about the A's and that one inning they had last night? The Red Sox will try to draw even at Fenway this evening. And tomorrow, the Reds and the Pirates in the National League. Good series going there, tied at a game apiece. That's tomorrow at 3 o'clock Eastern. Baseball tonight and baseball tomorrow right here on CBS. 
So Vinny Testaverde has a little bit of room to work now. At his own 17. Anderson into the secondary and a first down. Gary Anderson rips it out to the 29-yard line. When we talk to uh, the offensive line people at, uh, at Tampa Bay, they say one of the guys you got to talk to is, is Bubba Grimes. And we had a chat with him yesterday. You mentioned before he's from Tyler, Texas. Watch him. He's the center here for the Buccaneers right now. Now watch this block that he gets on the nose tackle. This is classic Bubba Grimes. With a guy with a name like Bubba, though, you wouldn't expect him to dress as well as he did the other day. <laughs> he came in and he had a nice suit on and everything. I'm reading all this stuff about him, and he looked good. He was cleaned up. Cobb, short game there. As Eugene Lockhart from his middle linebacker position came in to put the hit on him. Number 56. Getting back to Grimes, his dad came into the meeting along with him and sat down. And uh, I was trying to squeeze a couple of good stories out of his dad, get some dirt on old Bubba. <laughs> Go Bubba over his lifetime, though. He's put enough dirt on. He's a good football player when he was growing up, as Dad said. And, uh, developed some fine blocking skills. I guess we should say it's Randy Grimes. Bubba's his nickname. And his sister wrote him a letter when he was a rookie at Tampa Bay camp. And Steve Wilson, the old center for the Bucks, found that letter and saw the Bubba on top of it, and the rest is history. Tester Burley had it batted up in the air by Lockhart. And Eugene started to take over on defense. You know, he was upset last week because he went out with a he got dinged up and uh, he didn't make his usual double digits and tackles but uh, Eugene Lockhart is very active in the middle for the Cowboys and watch him just leap up and slap this one away it looked like uh, one of those forwards in the NBA he goes out as the pass coverage unit comes in for the Cowboys four wideouts for Vinny Testaverde from the shotgun third down and eight Deep middle, and a first down for the Bucks to John Harvey out of the backfield. Harvey had uh, Billy Bates trying to cover him downfield, and that's a mismatch right away because Bates is a safety guy, and he's trying to cover a, a quick running back. Now, he's going to come out on the right side of your screen. You see Harvey, 26, coming out on a kind of like a banana ride. He's going to bend it around and come back to the, the middle of the field. And you see Bates is beat right now. He's just beat all the way. That's what the Buccaneers have to start doing, though. Getting that ball out to all their people and using all the tools they have available in their toolbox. Jimmy Johnson says, we don't want Vinny throwing when he wants to. That time he maybe didn't want to, but it was a nice strike and a first down of the 49. Cobb got a yard, maybe two. Submarine there as Hamill got a piece of him on the left defensive side for Dallas. 7-3 Cowboys, 8.35 and the clock running here, third quarter. Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggets with you at Texas Stadium. Dallas' defense trying to figure out how they can get it going and get it cranked up. Stop the Buccaneers, and when the Buccaneers put the ball in the air, that's when they can be really dangerous. Reggie Cobb, the single setback. Testaverde, the slant to Carrier, and another Tampa Bay first down at the 36 of Dallas. Pick up a 14. Francis and Washington combined on the hit. They haven't gone to Carrier as much this year. The Pro Bowler a season back. But, you know, when we looked at the stats at halftime, Brad, you know, Testaverde had thrown five passes. It's tough to keep going to your quality guys, and I think that that's what, the, you know, we talked about the focus and where they need to be, and, and those quality people outside are guys that like to get the football in their hands. Carrier picked up the first down at the Dallas 35. Testaverde appears to be changing things up again. Somehow got the pass away and completes it to Reggie Cobb. Yeah, but the thing he wanted to do, you saw him, he wanted to throw the quick hitch pass to Bruce Hill up top, 84. And the problem was he looked over there and Bruce had his back turned to him. And he, he wasn't sure if he could let it go or not. You'll watch Vinny Tessaverde. He's going to turn over to his right. And right now he wants to unleash the football. But Bruce Hill has his back turned to him. So Cobb comes out and Danny Stubbs gets in his face. And he says, hey, I just got to dump the thing off to my running back. Lockhart and Norton put down Cobb. But Vinny keeps his composure and completes the pass, brings up second down at six. Bruce Hill in motion, here's the full blitz. Anderson, what a catch at the eight-yard line. 
that was a pick em for, for Vinny Testaverde. He had Anderson going one way open, and he has Mark Carrier going the other way wide open. Watch, you'll see both of them come across wide open downfield for Testaverde, but he decides on Anderson. You saw Carrier making his break just now flashed across. Anderson working against Norton. Just gets behind him and makes a nice reception. The Giants picked on Kenny Norton a little bit with a screen pass last week. That time, just Anderson being able to get out there and get the half step. Did it for the Bucks, and they've got first and goal at the Cowboys' seven. Anderson lost the ball. Dallas football. One old hurricane steals it from another. Danny Stubbs, the guy, he said that this team is looking towards him as being a leader now. Ball gets popped out right there. Gary Anderson appeared to just hit the ball on the backside of somebody that popped out and it's re recovered by Dallas. Cowboys with a lead and they've got the football back. No gain for Emmett Smith. As the Tampa Bay Buc just wasted the longest drive they've had all season. They went 87 yards, had the ball over six minutes, and then Gary Anderson fumbled at the five. And now uh, the pressure's on the Tampa Bay defense to see if they can stand up to this uh, this Dallas offense now and get the ball back for their offense in good position. 7-3 Cowboys. That's the way it's been since the first quarter. Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggets with you here in Irving. And the sun back out over Texas Stadium as the Cowboys have a second and nine. Martin. Run out by Kevin Murphy. He got by the first man, but he didn't get by Murphy. Ricky and Reynolds still bring up third and four. I'm sorry, Brad. Ricky Reynolds came up and tried to really give him a rap, and then when he did it, he missed him. Watch Ricky Reynolds on this play. Uh, tell me if he wants to do some major league damage here or what. Right there, he's coming in with that shoulder, leading in pretty nicely, but uh, Murphy comes over and makes a stop from his uh, linebacking position. Third down and four for the Cowboys. Smith and A.G., a dual backfield behind Aikman. Same pass, but Martin had to go to his knee to make the catch, and he's going to be short of the first down. Ricky Reynolds stayed with him that time. So the Cowboys will have to punt it away. But they did prevent Tampa Bay from scoring. And now they can kick it back to the Bucks. Saxon's done a nice job today with his kicks. There's his numbers. He led the NFL going into the Giant game before he had the off day. Willie Drury back for Tampa Bay. Saxon stands at his own five. And he got a lot of this one. Drury back pedals to the 29. Picked up about seven on the return after a 52-yard kick by Mike Saxon. 3.58 to go third quarter. Dallas still leads. Dallas leading 7-3. 3.58 to go third quarter. And the Buccaneers who came in 3-1 and one under Ray Perkins. Off to their best start since 79. And I think one of the reasons why is because uh, they have had some nice balance and they've, uh, you know, they've thrown the ball when they needed to and thrown it judiciously. But uh, now I think they have to start loosening the cannon up, as we said before, and let Vinny go. Gary Anderson. Boy, he took a shot from Vincent Smith, but he still picked up good yardage out near the 42-yard line. Gary Anderson, of course, with brilliant days in the USFL and then with the San Diego Chargers. And there's his numbers on the afternoon. He also has a fumble, which ended at the uh, Cowboys five-yard line last trip. Stopped in his tracks by Dean Hamill. Tasmanian Devil. Oh, <laughs> that one hurt me. <laughs> Dean Hamill, one of the things that Dean Hamill does well for that 
defensive line as he penetrates. As soon as the ball snaps, he's a guy that's going to come across the line of scrimmage on you, and you got to get some shoulder pads on him and hold him a little bit, too. And you saw him slide off the block right there above the grimes and get in there and just put the wood to Gary Anderson. Hamill opened up on his teammates last week. He thought that the Cowboys didn't take the loss to the Giants hard enough, and he let them know it. Jimmy Johnson said, I don't mind that he said it. I'm glad he feels that way. Third down, Testaverde, Anderson, he could be gone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. 58 yards, Testaverde to Anderson. And we talk so much about how many touches Gary Anderson has and what he does with them. And one of the things that's critical is you get him involved in the passing game. He's working against linebackers many times. And here he just simply beats the linebacker. You saw the coverage there, crossover. And he is just simply gone because the safety split out to go out wide to cover the wide receivers. Too deep coverage by the Cowboys. Once he got that little crease after making the catch, you can forget about it. And the Bucks take the lead for the first time today. Steve Christie in for the point after. And Tampa Bay, we expected they had to open it up. Boy, did they ever. 10-7, Bucks in front. Gary Anderson on the receiving end of the longest scoring play of the year for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 58-yard touchdown catch in the Bucks in front of Dallas. Now 10-7 with 2.35 to go third quarter. Steve Christie set to kick it away. James Dixon and Alexander Wright are deep for Dallas. Dixon a yard deep. Got the outside. And he's out near the 27-yard line where Ricky Reynolds ran him out. What a day Gary Anderson has had, Dan. We talked about you know, the touch situation, how many times he touches the ball. Look what he's done rushing. 70 yards on 14 attempts and receiving 82 yards on only two receptions. Of course, one of those was the, when he just took it for the touchdown. Well, he certainly hasn't hurt his numbers as far as total yards on the day. And what really helps him in the slipstream is that ponytail that he wears. You know, <laughs> that's his extra turbo, I think. Uh, we see him go into that extra gear. He's about to become a daddy again sometime later this month. Here's the pitch. Heisman cuts it back. Picked up two or three. Mark Robinson stayed home to make the tackle. You know, it's interesting when we were talking to Alonzo Highsmith, he said when he came in from Houston, uh, you know, people were doubting whether or not he was healthy because he had his knee scope uh, a couple of times. And he said the reason why was because the first time when they went in, and the knee got infected. And he had to go into the hospital for a month uh, in February. So he went down to 214 from 240, and he's been working himself back. Uh, Jimmy Johnson told us he called the lines up before they made the trade and said, hey, how are you doing? I know you'll be straight with me. And he said, I'm going to be okay, coach. He picked up three there at second and seven. Aikman. Plenty of time. McKinnon. First down near the 46. And Dennis McKinnon having a good day. 16-yard pickup. Dennis McKinnon will run slants very well. All of his patterns is a technician on that. The one thing that Tampa Bay defensively should watch out for with a guy like Dennis McKinnon is he's going to give you that post corner move or something where he's going to fake you out. He's going to set you up and then he's going to try to go deep on you. And he has the legitimate speed to go that way. He's made some comments in the press in the last couple of weeks about not getting the ball enough. But it seemed to us when talking to Jimmy Johnson, he was just saying, hey, I want guys to want the football. It's no problem. Play fake. And Aikman hit as he throws. Incomplete. May have been Broderick Thomas again that forced that wobbly pass. Oh, there was no doubt. It was Broderick Thomas. He's a greedy man, too. He's looking for a fourth sack today. He's look at him. Oh, gee, I almost had him. Watch him on the left side of your screen. 51, Broderick Thomas working against Jay Novacek, the tight end. And he just gets into Troy Aikman just as he's coming through with the football and trying to deliver it. Roderick Thomas, who last year played very little after being a number one draft choice, but Ray Perkins said he almost ran the off-season workout program, but he said he has turned himself around 360 degrees. Inside, a quick draw to Smith, and he gets it to the midfield stripe. And let's go to New York for an update on the 49ers and the Oilers. Here's Greg Gubble. All right, Brad, big doings in Houston. Watch Joe Montana with all kinds of time. 
You don't give that man that much time. John Taylor on the receiving end. By the time it winds up, 78 yards and a touchdown. And the 49ers go into a 14-14 tie with the Oilers. Back to Dallas, Brad and Dan. All right, guys. That's why they're world champs, huh? Anytime you give them Joe Montana more than about four seconds, you're in trouble. <laughs> Third down at six for the Cowboys right at midfield. Aikman's going to take off. I don't know if it was a design quarterback draw, but it's got the Cowboys a first down. It was designed in a sense that it was designed to keep Troy Aikman healthy because he looked around on that corner again, and guess who he saw coming at him? It was number 51, Broderick Thomas, bringing some uh, heat. I think we got to nickname him Microwave, Instant Heat. Well, the Cowboys will keep the football and keep the drive alive, and that will go into the fourth quarter. That's the end of three quarters of play with a score. Dallas trailing Tampa Bay 10-7. Our coverage will continue after this message from your local station. And Broderick Thomas has sprinkled a little dust today, hasn't he? Yeah, he sure has. And as we were talking about before, he's got a nice uniform work up there. We talked about the blood, <laughs> the jersey being tied. He's got a bedspread that's uh, acting as a towel for him down there, hanging from his waist. So he's got that full speed, all-out linebacker look going today. Troy Aikman and the Cowboys first down at the Tampa Bay 44. Play fake, a great one. Tommy Agee. Thirty-five yards to the fourteen-yard line. We talked to Troy Aikman before the game. He said one of the things that's really nice now is he's seeing the field better, and he's also very good at play-action fakes. And you saw him there come out, fake the defense out, and just lob the ball out to A.J. That's maturity in a quarterback. He's starting to do all the small things well now. Cowboys in business here early in the fourth quarter, trailing 10-7. First down at the Bucks, 14. Emmett Smith. Smith. Touchdown. He's a little train that could. Emmett Smith, number 22, <laughs> taking it off that left side. Good keep block there by A.G. Just brings him into that uh, secondary of the Buccaneers, and he just does the rest with a strong block, block, uh, blocking effort by his offensive line. Ken Willis in for the point after. And the Cowboys showing their newfound maturity. 14.08 to play. Emmett Smith has the Cowboys back in front. At halftime, we said we thought this game would have to open up. Has it ever? Boy, we look at our game summary. Vinny Testaverde uh, realized that he had a throwing arm. He's 7 to 6, 130 yards. And Gary Anderson on the ground, uh, excuse me, in the air with 82 yards of reception. But Emmett Smith with 94 yards rushing for the Cowboys. His best day as a pro. And his touchdown just put the Cowboys in front. And now Willis will kick it back. Reggie Cobb at the one. And the Cowboys special teams are involved now. Cowboys riding high emotionally now in this game. They've come back in the football game and gotten back in front of Tampa Bay. Tampa is perceived in this ball game, at least, as being the, uh, the, the team with the upper hand, the experienced team. And, and Dallas now is showing some want to in terms of getting back in the football game. And, and they're really playing Tampa tough, like we thought they might. Two young teams slugging it out here in Irving, Texas. Cowboys, Jimmy Johnson had said, hey, this is a crossroads game. This is a big one. Tampa Bay knows if they win, they stay atop the NFC Central. And with 13.59 to go, we've got a good ball game. First down, Tampa Bay. Anderson. Not too much. Noonan and Jeff Goat are there. Maybe got a couple on that carry. Over 60,000 here at Texas Stadium today. 
Brad, when you're down on that field, too, this is Texas Stadium. This is Dallas Cowboys Stadium. It means something when you come in here and you're playing these guys. It means something when you wear that, that uniform of the Dallas Cowboys. It's a special feeling. The crowd is into it. That'll quiet them. Ron Hall, the tight end of first down Tampa Bay. Out near the 38-yard line. Give him 17 on the pass play. And now you can hear a pin drop in here. They'll get it cranked up again, though. You know that. We used to have the same when we came down there. You know, they had these stars around the side of the field, all the way around the rim of the field. They said, hey, look, don't get dog. Don't get run to the stars. <laughs> if you get run to the stars, hit the ramp and leave the field. First down for Vinny Testaverde, who's been red hot in the second half. On the bootleg, throws it away. I think that's Vinny's second incompletion this half. And that was an excellent decision by Vinny to throw the ball away because he really didn't have a receiver open downfield. We've got a good one here today. We've got some good ones coming up next week. The NFL today will get it underway next Sunday, 1230 Eastern. Greg and Terry and the gang will start things off. And then a doubleheader weekend. 49ers and the Falcons, big one in the West. And many of you will see the Giants in Washington in our game, too. That's next week, doubleheader, right here on CBS Sports. Second and ten for the Buccaneers. Bruce Hill in motion. He's got the catch. But he's run under by Manny Hendricks. One of the things I want to talk about is this Dallas defensive line on the right side of your screen, the left side, excuse me, they're going to run a twist. One of the problems that this young defensive line has for Dallas is when they run their twist, they're standing up. So the offensive linemen say, hey, look, this is just like a dummy drill of practice. Perfect. Stand right there. I hit you in the chest, and you won't touch my quarterback. They've got to get lower and dip those shoulders when they go into the uh, offensive line. They'll be coming after Vinny Testaverde now. Third down at six from the shotgun. can run but you can't hide Jimmy Jones uh, Danny Stubbs big pressure there Jim Jeffco right away flushes him Jones chases him down oh, that's Tolbert 92 then they saying how many defensive linemen do they have on the field right now and then he runs into Bubba Grimes who's over there trying to help out a little bit stuck in the Miami Vice again huh <laughs> Stubbs and Johnson two former hurricane players converge on their old teammate Testaverde again and almost a blocked punt for the Cowboys. Rod Harris from the 19. And he lost the ball. They're going to blow it dead. There were helmets flying and footballs flying after a 51-yard punt. Odie Harris was the key guy down there. He came in, just lowered his head, and boom, took him out, took his feet out. Watch Odie Harris. Number 20 is return is on, and watch Harris come flying in here. That's playing special teams right there. Today's Duracell, the copper top battery. And by America's favorite light beer, Miller Lite, the sole sponsor of the NFL Player of the Year Award. Emmett Smith on uh, first down. Picked up a couple of yards, and we've got an injured Tampa Bay player. Maybe Reuben Davis slow to get up. He had some shoulder problems coming into this game. Suffered in the... Went over the Vikings last week, and there he is. You can see he's a little dinged up, but he's coming off. He said he couldn't wait to get down here on this field here at Texas Stadium because uh, his mom was a big uh, Cowboys fan, and he was and when he was growing up. And he knew it was going to be kind of special coming in here. And so far, he's been pretty active for the Buccaneers today in that defensive line. Second down and long for the Cowboys. They are in front, 14-10. In good play. Intended for Tommy Agee. Keith McCants 
in on that play. Expect to see this Tampa Bay defense now. Ray Perkins said he's not a blitzing coach, but expect to see them to get a little bit more aggressive right now. They've got to make a statement, I think, on this stand of plays. They've got to start sending those linebackers like McCann to just turn them loose a little bit, maybe, and uh, Roderick Thomas and see if they can get after the quarterback. McCann's forced that incompletion, and it brings up third down and eight for Dallas. It's a long eight, too. Here comes the blitz again. Aikman, he's got the first down. When you ask some of these players how fast they are like a quarterback, you should ask them two speeds, one when you're just running and the other one when somebody like Broderick Thomas is after you because Troy Aikman right there looks like he's ready for the Olympics. Mark two and they're blocking uh, Broderick Thomas there, gets inside. See those hands up inside? That's where you can hold legally right up in there. Good technique that time by Mark two and a. And just that extra split second gave Aikman the corner. First down, Cowboys. At their own 35. A.G. A couple of tough yards inside. Jim Scow, the first one there, and he got help from his friends, and the clock's worked its way under the 10-minute mark. 9.42 to go. Right, when we talked to Jim Scow the other day, we said, what do you bring to this team? And he says, well, lack of size and lack of strength. <laughs> that's what everybody says about it. But when he first walked into the room, I said, you know, you look like an accountant. He says, that's what I studied at uh, Nebraska. <laughs> he wouldn't tell us how much he really weighs, because, quite frankly, I don't buy what's listed on the program for... Jim Scow, they've got him at 250. I said, what do you weigh, about 238? And he got a big grin on his face as if I was close. <laughs> yeah. Defensive lineman, the guy has a trash collection business back in Omaha. Perfect, right? Yeah. <laughs> Fifth year out of Nebraska. Played on the same line as Danny Noonan of the Cowboys and Broderick Thomas, who we've talked of so much today, also former Nebraska Cornhusker. Eight minutes trouble. Smith on the screen. He reversed his field, trying to make something out of it, but Eugene Marv made a nice open field stop. And, and really credit Newton, uh, though, with the pressure. See, in, in a screen situation, what you want to do is back up and allow that, you know, time for the quarterback to set up in the back and get outside. Now, if that pressure comes up the middle right now, like it just did, Aikman has no opportunity to look out there and let the play develop. There's Tim Newton, the ice box, and he's trimmed down too about the chest now. <laughs> it's kind of a big cooler. Second down at 26. Kelvin Martin back out to the 30. Odie Harris made the stop. Kelvin Martin tough for his size. Kelvin Martin is a guy who last year Dallas really depended on a great deal and uh, when he went down with an injury it really hurt them offensively but uh, he's coming back very strong and as well as uh, Michael Irving and as we said earlier Jimmy Johnson said both of them look like they're right on schedule and a little bit ahead of where they were even last year. Kelvin Martin was on a pace last year to catch over 60 passes and he's on that same type of pace with five grabs today still third and long for Aikman and company. Here comes the blitz. Not enough for the first down, though. Eric Everett, the nickelback, made the stop. The Cowboys will have to kick it away with seven minutes, 20 seconds, and the clock running. But that was a critical situation for Dallas. You want to keep the drive going and burn up more of the clock. She said it's just over seven minutes left to go in the game. Tampa Bay offensively now, if they want to get back in this game and win it, this is when they start showing it. Willie Drury back. Awaiting the kick of Mike Saxon. Cowboys with a 14 to 10 lead, but Tampa Bay will have it back on offense here in a moment. Drury from the 17. Nifty return. He got about 10 on the return. Jack Del Rio made the stop on the punt team for Dallas. 6.46 to play. Cowboys in front. 
46 to play. Tampa Bay trailing by four, and Ray Perkins' team was kind of backed up against it against the Vikings last week, and they came back to win. It's put themselves in first place can they stay there well this is the thing on a drive like this is when you know whether or not you belong up at the top of the NFC Central Division because now it's a little bit of a character check for your club offensive line when you get in the huddle you start looking around and you see who really wants to do this thing the Bucks two games over 500 and in first place for the first time since 81 they want to stay there that's the early it's a hill he broke a tackle got about 16 in a first down Tampa Bay. It's a mindset that you get into it. You see Tampa, they're not panicking right now. They're very calm about it. Play action up front. Line does a nice job giving, of selling the play action, and Benny delivers the ball on time. Last week, that's how they won the game against Minnesota. Same kind of effort here. Very smooth so far in this, uh, this drive. Bruce Hill was the main ingredient on the drive that won it last week with a long catch and then an 11-yard touchdown, and he got the first down there after the 44. Accepted. No, the ball, no, the ball hit the ground, the ground first, right? James Washington, I thought he took that one off somebody's shoe top. That's what Jimmy Johnson wants, but he's not going to get the call. I it, don't think. it really looked like that. It would be interesting to see the replay because the ball skidded, and I don't know if it skidded on the ground or it skidded off of uh, another player. Now, let's watch it here. The ball is delivered. It pops up right there, and yeah, it hits the ground. That's a one-hopper. He made it look good, though. Well, that's part of the whole deal, you know. Get the coach excited. Houston still leading San Francisco. New Orleans over Atlanta. It's Miami all tied up. Second down of 10 for Tampa Bay, trailing 14 to 10. Gary Anderson dropped in his tracks. And that is Jimmy Jones again. And the third round draft choice out of Miami is having himself a day. You know, it was interesting when uh, Jimmy Johnson said that we need an impact guy, a dominating defensive lineman. Jimmy Jones may very well be that guy, but you had to figure that the Cowboys had to get a guy named Jimmy Jones with Jerry Jones owning the team <laughs> and Jimmy Johnson coaching it. You knew that had to happen just to mess with all the broadcasters. He's gotten in on a couple of sacks and drops Gary Anderson for no gain there. Third down and 10 for Tampa Bay. They've got to have it. From the shotgun. They won't get it. Gary Anderson comes up four yards shy. And Tampa Bay will have to punt. Mark Royals will kick it away. The Cowboys look to have the return on, but they have been very close to Royals a couple of times today. Rod Harris, the deep man. High kick. Harris does a nice job of faking out the Tampa Bay punt team and it goes in the end zone for the touchback. Cowboys will work from their own 20-yard line. Tonight on CBS, if the Iraqis you'll meet tonight on 60 Minutes get to do what they want to do, we could pull out of the Gulf Monday morning. What do they want to do? Kill Saddam Hussein. 60 Minutes tonight on CBS. And that's followed by game two of the American League Championship Series. The A's battle the Red Sox live from Fenway Park. It's all coming up tonight right here on CBS. The Cowboys have had their sideline huddle, and here they come with a four-point lead and 4.20 to play. And just thinking about what they talked about earlier in the week, they said they want to capture the fourth quarter and say that it's theirs now. The rookie Emmett Smith got about three. Mark Robinson came up from the secondary. And if you're over on that Dallas sideline with uh, just over four minutes left to go in the game, you say, hey, look, we get the good drive going now. Keep the running game going with Emmett and Tommy and all the rest of those guys. Just keep cranking it out and burn that clock. And we go we go back winners. You know, we're, we're winning in our own stadium. Emmett Smith's about one carry away from a 100-yard afternoon. Now, wait a minute. He's got it now. 20 carries for 100 yards. 
And a touchdown. Play action. Tommy Agee. He got the first down out near the 42 and did a smart thing by staying in bounds. The nice thing to set the play up, though, Brad, is watch Troy Aikman on the fakes and watch the reaction of the defense right there. You see everybody coming in on the fake, and now he's got an opportunity to roll back out and get it to A.G. on the, uh, on the play action. And A.G. does a nice job of lowering that shoulder and getting a couple extra yards on the play. He picked up 18 yards and a first down at the three-minute mark. Cowboys 14 to 10, and we are now at three minutes. Expect to see more of A.G. and Smith now. Evan Smith. Sixteen yards later, first down Dallas. It's so much fun watching Evan Smith because he's a young man that's enjoying himself now. He's enjoying following those big fullbacks up there. A.J. throws a nice block up there on the line of scrimmage, and Smith comes through and just pounds it for extra yardage. I'm sure a lot of people were wondering whether he was too young or not for the NFL. Well, I think he's answered those doubters today. Out of Escambia High School in Florida, and he says, I know a lot of my buddies will be watching. Yeah, he said what a day he's had. He says he's got some goals for this year. And, uh, one of them is to stay healthy, of course, to win, make the all-rookie team, gain 1,000 yards, and uh, lead his team in every stat, and finally to make the Pro Bowl. Not but, like putting together a list of goals. Yeah, talk about <laughs> a, a wish list. <laughs> Well, you know, hey, those things are not out of reach if he continues to run the football like this. He gets good blocking up front, outstanding block. Crawford Curry that threw a nice little crush block. He's from Clearwater, Florida, helping out with another Florida guy, Emmett Smith. First time Dallas has had a 100-yard rusher since Paul Palmer early last season. And right there, number 22, is the man of the hour here in Irving, Texas. 229 to play. Cowboy first down at the Tampa Bay 42. A yard, maybe two for Smith. And the key ingredient right now is hold on to the football and try to get one more first down as Tampa Bay's taking another timeout. Don't forget, we have got baseball tonight on CBS. The A's and the Red Sox game two in the ALCS and Oakland up 1-0 after their big inning last night and a big victory. Tonight, Bob Welch, 27-game winner against Dana Kicker, the youngster. Tomorrow, it'll be the Reds and the Pirates, game three of the National League Championship set. That's at 3 o'clock Eastern. Two big games. Baseball action right here on CBS Sports. And Brad, these games are big games, even for the big men that play. We were talking to Crawford Curry. He's from uh, Clearwater, Dunedin area. He plays along that offensive line for the Cowboys. And he wanted to make sure we said hello to his mom and dad who were back there watching the, the ball game in Dunedin. George and Ann, I'm sure, are glued to the set. And their baby boy, if you want to call that guy that. Yeah, he's the guy that started wrestling when he came out of high school, you know. <laughs> he asked us if Jesse the Body Ventura was going to be here with us. He says, he going to be upstairs with you? Oh, gee, I'm worked up about it. End around. Oh. McKinnon almost had his head taken off. Tim Newton. They call him Fig when he was with the Minnesota Vikings, and he is one big Fig Newton. And Dennis McKinnon will call him dangerous when you're running that in, that uh, reverse. Watch Newton at the nose position, 96. He just reads this all the way, stays with it, sees Aikman hand the ball off, and he just makes a stop on McKinnon and crushes him. We're at the two-minute warning. The Cowboys cling to a four-point lead. They will be partying in Dallas tonight if the Cowboys can hold on to this point. And Jimmy Johnson's Cowboys looking for their second win of the season. That would double their win output of last year. Troy Aikman's had a strong second half, 9 out of 12 in this half. We don't expect to see him throw it too much, but they do have third down and long. Emmett Smith got to the 45, and that's it. Broderick Thomas made the tackle. 
<laughs> Dallas Cowboys like Tampa Bay a young team and looking ahead to the future and look what they have coming up in the next couple of drafts and it's tough to make mistakes with all of those early round draft choices you figure the first rounders should be guys that maybe get to the Pro Bowl for you the Cowboys will have to give it up though to the Tampa Bay Bucks with a four-point lead and Dallas, but the Bucks will get the football back, and if ever, the Cowboys wanted Mike Saxon to drop one inside the five, as he has twice today, it's right here. He shanked this one, but he might get a good roll. It goes out near the 15-yard line. It's not often that you're happy as a punter to shank it, but I'm sure he was in that situation. Some close games going on around the NFL today. San Francisco looking like they might get surprised down there in Houston. The tie game in the NFC Central. A couple of clubs with only one win. Pittsburgh's had a whole season worth of scoring today. <laughs> I guess Bubby Brister finally figured out that offense. Throw it to the wide receivers and the, and the tight ends and not to the guys in the other jersey. <laughs> would be okay. Well, the crowd coming into it for the Dallas defense. Gary Anderson. Out near the 21 where Bill Bates put him down. And now Tampa Bay will hurry it up here with 1.30 to play at Texas Stadium. The Cowboys lead the Bucks, but this is the spot Tampa Bay found itself in a week ago. And they were able to come back and beat the Vikings. Testaverde, that might be a first down catch for John Harvey. I think he's got it. They may have to take a look. One of the things you want is one big play in there, one big pass play that gets you downfield very quickly. That is a first down. They move the sticks. High snap. Smart move by Vinny Testaverde, who got a very, very good bounce on that one. I don't think he could have done that any better, though, if he planned on it. Watch the ball bounce right back to Vinny as it's uh, centered off to the side. And he just very calmly picks it up and realizes he doesn't have anything downfield and takes it on out of bounds. Boy, that's that's really being very confident in yourself back there. A lot of people would panic with those, those hooks bearing down on you. The Bucks are out of timeouts. They need a touchdown. And they are 78 yards away right now. Running out of time. In the grasp at the 19. Tony Tolbert that time. Then he had plenty of time early on as uh, receivers didn't uncover downfield. Good coverage by the Dallas secondary. This is really a coverage sack because you saw what the opportunities he had to throw the football and no one was open. Third down. Isaac Holt could have ended things right there, but he couldn't hold on, and the Bucks will have one more play. I wonder how long will this Dallas secondary go without picking off another ball. Maybe somebody has to learn, you know, give them some stick em or something, because they've just dropped a lot of football. There's the guy that has the only interception for them this year, Isaac Holt, and he almost had his second one. Now it is fourth down and 16 yards to go for Ray Perkins, Buccaneers. And this is the last chance. Hill can't hold on. the high school with MC Hammer just said to Bruce Hill you can't touch this <laughs> this is a, a really nice play by Vince Albert watch him come up from the secondary position safety position, and he just delivers a smack on Bruce Hill Hill going up making the extra effort to catch the football but Albert almost decapitates him on the play once again, here's another look at it. Vince Aldrin uh, had 16 tackles last week and said he enjoys making tackles. I think he enjoys going after receivers even more. 
The Cowboys are going to win number two. Tampa Bay can't stop the clock. Troy Aikman takes it to one knee. And Jimmy Johnson has doubled his output of victories from a year ago. The Cowboys go to two and three. with a strong second half and the Cowboys win it. There's the final. The Dallas Cowboys upend the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the only NFC East team that had to play this week wins this week. So the central division of the NFC shaken up a bit now as the Bears who are playing Green Bay today that game starting in about 20 minutes or so for the time being have the top spot in the division and Tampa Bay will fall at least momentarily into second place the NFC East we mentioned the rest of the division idle but the Cowboys with a fifth place schedule won't have a weekend off until December but hey they're back in the hunt Dan. and really you don't want that weekend off now you're playing pretty well you know and, and, and things are starting to come together for you if you're looking at Dallas and, and you want to continue on now and continue to show improvement from week to week and they go into Phoenix next week and quite naturally they feel that they have a real opportunity there uh, to show Phoenix that they made a couple of mistakes as well. Troy Aikman, another strong showing, his second good outing in a row, and Emmett Smith over the 100-yard mark. And the Dallas Cowboys with two touchdowns today, and that's all they needed. Final here from Irving, Texas. 14-10, the Cowboys win it.